I don't care if you've never heard of SWR. At the end of this video, you're going to know more about it than 90% of the population. Today, I'm explaining SWR with coffee cups and guitars. Now, this video isn't just for CB radio. It's for any radio that you have. Ham radio, GMRS, CB radio, whatever you like. If you're transmitting, you need a meter. So how does it work? Well, let's get to it. So first off, we need to make sure you're using the right meter. So this dirty old SWR meter is for CB radio at 27 megahertz. It'll also work for 10 meters as well. But if you have a GMRS or two meter radio, you're going to want a different SWR meter. And I have one in the description that works from 120 to 500 megahertz. It's pretty cheap at 30 bucks. So check the description for both of these and uh, let's get on with the rest of it. All right, Captain Crunch, let's say you already have your SWR meter. What else do you need? Well, along with the meter, you'll need a patch cable, and that patch cable is for attaching the meter itself to the radio. But here's something I didn't think about the first time around. You might actually want to get an adapter, and uh, that's because not all radios are using SO239 connectors. In fact, this one pops right on top of here. It's a BNC to SO239 connector. And now, wherever I am, if I'm out in the field, I can check my antenna without having to run into the shack and checking it on the main radio. All right, so how do we hook this thing up? Well, on the back of your SWR meter, you'll have two SO239 connectors. One will say ANT, possibly, and the other one might say TRANS or EXMITTER. TRANS or EXMITTER goes to your radio, ANT goes to your antenna. Now, I put aerial here to remember all the silent keys. God bless you guys. But what happens if you hook this up backwards? Well, let's take a look at what happens if you hook it up the right way first and foremost. Then I'll show you what happens if it's backwards. All right, so this SWR meter says antenna and transmitter on the face plate, so we're going to attach the transmitter side with our patch cable to the back of our radio. Ah, now we have our radio attached to the transmitter side of our SWR meter. Now all we need to do is attach the antenna side. All right, it's all hooked up now. We have our antenna and our radio hooked up. It's time to check the SWR. Make sure, and this is really important, that your switch is in the FWD, or forward position. Now we want to hit the push to talk button on our microphone and you'll see that the needle moves. Now what we want to do is calibrate that to the point it says set right there. So we're going to go to set, all right? And right about there. Here's the fun part. We're gonna check our SWR. We're going to switch the switch to the reflected position. And it looks like it dropped to just above one. So we have great SWR. Let me show you again on a bigger meter. That way you don't miss anything. And then I'm going to show you what bad SWR looks like. And set your calibration to the set point. Now we will hit SWR. And it drops like a rock. We have great SWR. Now, what does really bad SWR look like? Well, I have this on a dummy load. That's why we have great SWR. Let's switch over to auxiliary. And we don't have an antenna there. This is what our SWR looks like. Pretty bad SWR. You wouldn't want that SWR. So what happens if you hook it up backwards? And what the hell does this coffee cup have to do with SWR? So what if you accidentally hooked up your SWR meter backwards? Well, the beauty of these analog meters is because they're symmetrical on both sides, the switch actually reverses. That means if we push down on the mic, we actually calibrate in the reflected position and we check the SWR in the forward position. That's actually pretty accurate too. You can check it that way. I wouldn't recommend it, obviously. You wanna put it around, the right way around, but still, it's not gonna blow anything up. I'd like to know what happens on a digital meter though. Well, that's good to know, but what the heck is SWR? So SWR is incredibly simple, and I'm not being facetious. It's just most of the time when people ask what SWR is, what they really mean is what is impedance. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve the simple SWR question for you, and then we'll move on to some real world examples of impedance. That way you can understand what's going on between your radio and your antenna. There is like 50 ladybugs in this room and they must think I'm one of them. So SWR is an abbreviation for standing wave ratio, and this is an incredibly simple concept, so stick with me. So we all know what a ratio is. If you have one apple on one side and two on the other, your ratio is one to two. But here is where it gets tricky and where ratios in the real world sense kind of break down. Now, you might expect that if we send an apple down a transmission line and we get an apple back, that our SWR is one to one. However, remember, we don't want any power back. So that would mean infinite SWR. We do not want anything back. So what are we really measuring here? Well, think of it like this. Think of it like we're measuring the height of the apple. And that's the ratio. If we show an apple that's the same height, we'll say it's a one-to-one. -one. But what does this look like on the inside of your SWR meter? 
So let's say we send one volt in our forward direction, and then we calibrate it and make that one volt look like the base level. I'll show you what I mean by that. So when you tell someone how tall you are, you're never talking about how tall you are compared to sea level. You're always talking about how tall you are compared to the floor you're currently standing. So that's what we're doing with the calibration knob. We calibrate, we tell it which floor we're standing on. And if there's anything above that floor, that means there's a reflection. So when you use your SWR meter in the reflected position, it'll tell you if there's any signal above that floor level. And that'll show up on your SWR meter. But what's causing all these reflections anyway? So those reflections are caused by an impedance mismatch, and a lot of people have trouble understanding impedance, which is why today I brought my guitar and my coffee cup, because I want to show you an analogy that you can really feel to understand impedance without all the imaginary esoteric numbers. So grab a coffee cup, because this is going to hurt. So if you've watched an impedance video before, you might be familiar with X sub L, X sub C, or these imaginary numbers, but they're not really great for intuitively understanding what impedance is. So today I'm going to substitute that with inertia. That way you can understand the analogy and even feel the incoming waves. All right, so how's this going to work? What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the beginning of where our cup is sitting. And I'm going to place my finger at a certain distance away from the cup, and I'm going to push the cup. All right, fully extended. Now we're going to mark where that cup ends. I can get it right there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cup back in the same original star position, and now I'm going to try to move it too quickly. I'm going to try to accelerate it really fast. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, shit. Of, um... Ah, well, as you can see, the cup did not actually reach the mark over here. We had a lot of reflected energy right into my soul. And that would be like sending a 50 ohm signal into a 500 or just a 5 ohm load. And believe me, that's not something you want to do. So where else can you spot impedance? Well, if you've ever been in a pool before, you can feel the characteristic impedance of the water. You can move, but you can't move really fast. When you try to move fast, the energy just gets reflected back. But what if there's nothing in the way for the energy to bounce off of to give you a reflected wave back? Well, in this case, there's nothing to absorb the energy, so it still gets reflected back. But if you have an antenna that fully accepts your energy, just like this guitar, then we don't have to worry about reflections. Let's say we play this guitar at a high impedance point. It doesn't really want to resonate very well and I can feel a lot of energy coming back into my hand. But if I play it in a low impedance point, it resonates entirely. Our energy was successfully used. Now does that mean that you can only feed an antenna at a low impedance point? Not at all. And I'll show you that with a swing set. So I've loaded this swing with 10 pounds of weight and I'm going to go ahead and let go of it. Notice that this swing reaches a peak. Now, how do we feed that peak? We have to feed it with pressure. So when it reaches a peak, we feed it with pressure. How do we feed the middle of the swing? Well, if we feed it with pressure, it just hurts. We have to feed it with speed. And so either way, whether you're putting pressure into it or speed into it, the swing set continues to resonate. Well, what the heck is speed and what is pressure? Well, speed, that's your current. Pressure, that's your voltage. So we feed our swing with motion where it accepts motion, and we feed it with pressure where it accepts pressure. Anywhere along this line of motion, you can match. Anywhere along this pressure line, we can match. That's exactly how a dipole works. So let's say we're going to feed this swing set in the middle. Would you rather feed it with 50 pressure and one speed or infinite pressure and zero speed? Well, of course, we would want to try to feed it with the highest speed we possibly can. And let's say that's all our radio can really do. 50, 50, 50 ohms. It's just a ratio, fellas. Voltage to current. And yes, just like a gearbox works, you can take that 50 ohms and transform it so that it's a higher pressure and a lower speed. And you can feed the antenna right at the end. But you don't have to feed it at just the ends. You can feed it anywhere along the antenna that you want, as long as you can match the impedance with your transformer. Well, I hope this video has helped you out some. If you want to know more, just ask in the comments. Check the description if you want more books on the subject. Maybe next time I'll make a video on harmonics. And until next time, it's Giant Jones. I'm here at home, and I'll see you later.
Like and subscribe.